Welcome. You are listening to Readers and Writers with your host, James Hill and Athena Paris of Rock Hill Publishing. I am Amy Ravichandran, and today we're talking about how do you choose a setting. So James, Athena, I know you guys as writers and as the owners of Rock Hill Publishing, you've seen so many books, you've written books and setting scenes and stuff. What is that process like? How do you know that this is the perfect setting for your book? What does that look like? I'm gonna let Athena take this one. She can go, she can go first. <laughs> go Athena. <Okay. laughs> so setting sometimes has to do with the genre that you're going to write. Okay. Example, if you're writing contemporary romance, you're usually going to pick uh, places of interest that are worldwide known. Like you will pick uh, famous cities or you can then pick a very rural setting because you want your uh, romance to take part somewhere in the middle of the country or something to say that uh, love stories also happen, you know, uh, out on the farms and uh, thing, you know, things like that. So your setting is going to have to do with the genre you're writing. So if you're in sci-fi, obviously, either you're going to make up planets or you're going to write um, a space odyssey type of thing, leaving Earth and traveling into the unknown. So it's scary, it's mysterious, it probably some horror and all kinds of things. If you're writing fantasy, obviously then you're either going to build a completely new world, which you can also do in science fiction, because you can create a completely new uh, alien world. It's just that the one has got to do with science and the other one's got to do with fantasy, probably involving magic and all kinds of um, things. Now, because of our cultures that we came from Europe, we draw back a lot to our European backgrounds, cultures. Mm -hmm. So we like to use medieval, for example, a lot. Medieval England, Vikings, um, those kind of things. Whereas there's a lot of other cultures that we could draw from if we do a little bit research. You know, there's uh, a that, lot of African that's the thing, and, yes. to go to other cultures and to and to write from another point of view. Right. You have to do a lot of uh, research into that culture. Like if you wanted to use. Chinese mythologies or African uh, mythology or something like that. Because like you say, we're in a Western world, mostly dominated by European society. When you talk about fantasy, they always go to the medieval period mm -hmm. and that's always the castles, the kings, the queens, mm -hmm. that type of, of, of storyline and that type mm -hmm. of setting. So right. when you're doing fantasy, it lends itself to to those mm. settings and even because science fiction. yes because one thing that sometimes writers do without even realizing is that your setting is helping you create conflict because if you take a modern day person here comes the time travel if you take a modern day person and you stick them in medieval times you can see all kinds of things are going to happen because right. The setting itself is already a challenge to that person because everything is different. They don't have electricity. They don't have running plumbing. The, their clothes are strange. Their shoes are horrible. There are no tarred roads. You know, everything is different. So all of that is already creating conflict even before you've said a word to anybody in that right. world. And, and yeah. that's sort of like the portal fantasy portal science fiction. We take somebody from this world and we drop them in another world. Yeah. And of course, like we say, a lot of times being from a Western society, we use Western themes. Right. Western meaning the world Western, not Western meaning the American West, right. <laughs> which well, so, happens to. So that's my question, right? Because that this is one I've always had and I have I don't know why, but whenever the moment comes for me to ask it, I forget it, okay? But I'm not going to forget it this time. When you're writing like a fantasy or a sci-fi, right? And it is like portal travel and things like that. Even if it's like to made up planets and stuff, right? Like Avatar, like that whole movie, right? It's like a whole thing, like 
humans going into you know the avatar land but how do you do research for that when it doesn't exist like that's my question like i don't i want to really understand that because these ideas are so fascinating but i want to know how do you just like build them around like different mythologies like how does that because you're supposed to when you're creating a world you have to think how do things work in my world is a government there's a, a there's an actual planet flora fauna what kind of animals birds are going to be in this world is the water going to look blue like on earth you know as on earth so you have to think is there going to, what's the economy like you are supposed to write down all these things that exist mm-hmm. and compare if you want them in that world or you take what you know and you change it to something that you completely make up. What's the money going to be called? How do they operate? Um, what, what is the level of government? Do they have presidents? Do they have prime ministers? Do they have kings, emperors? What they've, who is ruling this world? Are there different levels of ruling? So like a president, ministers, whatever, depending on which country in the world you live, councillors, senators, whatever you want to create. So you have to think as is, how do we make our world work? What what works in our world? And go see if that works in the world that you're going to create. And some way you can be completely original and swap it around. So you can create new animals, new uh, vistas. The trees can be completely different. They can be the other way around, blue bark and pink leaves and you know things like that that's my kind of so. tree okay i'm down for that so here's <laughs> here's one that i have maybe it's a pet peeve of mine i don't know but like bridgerton right which was written i don't know when it was written but the time period you know there's like the hierarchy and stuff over in england but it's like with a modern twist on it are those things that like if you're going to write about that time period should you not modernize it or is it like do you need to stay true to that or are there just certain elements right because that's like my thing right I like if it's going to be about this time period then like make it relatable to what that time period would have been like when you do research and stuff or those like would that be considered still like uh I mean of course it would be like fiction but you know what How do you come up with that like setting, right? Because it's one of those, I feel like that's a fine line. Yeah. Well, Bridgerton and even more recently, the Gilded Age, which was about New York, and I'm from New York, so it was that they take the time period and they show you what's actually happening around the world. And I don't think Bridgerton really showed you that time period other than a sort of like a real glossed over high society type of time because they could have romances yeah it's about the romance it was all about the romance and how high society worked with their parties and things like that it could have actually been taken out of any time period so they just picked the time period to actually build a story around the romance around in the gilded age they stuck more to the class system that was going on in america at the turn of the century Okay. At, at, at that time period. So when you when you start building your settings around something, one of the things is if you're going to be on world or off world. So if you're writing about a setting that's on this planet in this in this world, real world stuff, you want to pick the time period. What exists in that time period? What's what's going on? What the social life is like? Those kind of things then matter. If you're going off world and you're creating your story around a fictional planet, a fictional time, you still pull from what you know. Writers write what they know. They always say, write what you know. So as a history buff, you might know something about the 16th century, 17th century. You're writing a world off world, but you're going to give it that flavor of 16th century, whatever, you know? Because you, but that's what you're pulling from. You're pulling from your knowledge of that time period of what went on on that time. So when you say, if you're creating a fantasy world, 
do, do you create it from nothing? Usually no. Everything is created from what you know and there is some sort of tie-in to your mm -hmm. world and what you're doing to manipulating facts and, and things to create your world. So you manipulate things. Do I want it to be like the world, like the period and time that I know? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to flip it on its head and make it just the opposite of what would have happened if they were in this time period and in this world? Yeah. Well, so let me ask you guys this, because Athena was talking about how it's about the romance, you know, going back to Bridgerton. So can like romance or war or something, can that be the setting of your book? Can, oh, is yeah. there a way to make it that, or is that not an option? Yeah. Okay. That's the setting of a lot of books, <laughs> you know, it's either the yeah. romance between the main characters, or if it's a historical piece or something, there's usually some sort of battle or war well, or conflict. Yeah. Well, I mean on. more in a sense of where it doesn't matter the time period because the setting is going to be the romance that's evolving. Like the, it's like an afterthought, right? So like um, the only example I can kind of think of is Pride and Prejudice, right? Which is, it has a setting, like a time period, you kind of get the feel for it. But the main focal point, I guess, and maybe the setting isn't the right word, but like the main plot I guess is probably better is the romance so then the time mm. period becomes like secondary is that something that like happens or is that not well Jane Austen lived in that period so she was writing about what she was observing uh -huh. in people hence Jane Austen will always be set in that time period because she lived then okay. if she lived now she probably would have written a contemporary romance and it would have been quite different because our norms have changed as well okay. so that is the thing um, I write certain romances as well from things that um, happen to a lot of family uh, members so it's set around the 60s and the 70s because that's when I was a child and I was observing these things so it's set in a contemporary world but not today's modern world it's still right. 50 years ago because that's how people lived and that is what I remember seeing and experiencing and listening to so that is how you pick the setting you know okay. it's uh, yeah yeah the killer series is set in the 70s because that's when i was growing up in new york and exactly. at that time you know the the mob and the and the mafia had always been around and we knew about it from like what the 30s or 40s or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. and so it has been big but in the 70s and 80s is when in New York, it came to a real head and they arrested a bunch of people and they had, a, you know, all the different people going to jail and it was making news. Yeah. So, so to set a story in that time period, it makes sense because you're talking about something that everybody will have at least a little knowledge of, if not, mm. you know, a deep knowledge of it, they would will, they will recognize the idea, okay, there was five families at this point, you know, you had your Godfather, you know, the Godfather movies came out, you know, so everybody knew the crime syndicates and stuff like that that were going on. So it makes sense to write the story in that time period. I could have wrote the story in, in modern times, but then you're like looking at it as, okay, so what is the mob like today? It has fallen off. It's not as much in the news. You don't hear much about it because so many people yeah. went to jail back in the 70s. Yeah. But it still exists. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. I've just been viewing setting the wrong way. I don't know why. I guess I, I mixed up like setting and plot because I always, yes. I don't know, like for Pride and Prejudice, you know, like the time period really took a back seat for me because it was all about the tension and the romance. I was evolving you know and so mm -hmm. like for Bridgerton the setting took a front seat and like I couldn't get into it because it wasn't time period accurate you know and and so that's where I guess for me they they blend there's like a blurry line there for me I guess but it was a modern romance and the setting was secondary to the story because yeah, okay. it was like the yeah. it was like the costuming 
Like they yeah. were wearing all the right costumes and stuff, but they was acting more uh, modern. Yeah, no, I know the new Cinderella did that, right? It was like set in like a Renaissance period. And they're playing like Madonna and Michael Jackson, you know? So it's like, it's one of those things. I don't know, I have a pet peeve about it, but no, this has been fantastic. I learned a whole lot. I hope you all listening learned and took little tidbits from all of this. Sadly, our time today has come to an end, but make sure that you join us next week. We're going to be talking about dialogue, which is probably one of the most important things when it comes to writing is being able to write good dialogue. So you're definitely not going to want to miss that. But you guys have been listening to Readers and Writers, and we'll catch you all next week. Bye, everybody.